um, of divine access. And it's also a very important day because today is what they call the Easter Sunday. We are celebrating the death and the resurrection of Christ. Of course, he's not dying today, but we are, it, it's a day to tell the whole world that, look, it is not just things happening, God made things to happen. That Christ died for us. That is, God gave his very best for the very worst. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, that when we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, is it there? Verse 5, please. Maybe verse 5. We can check verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with him, by grace are ye saved. That is to say, God gave us his very best. We know Jesus was number one. There has never been anything greater, and there was never anything greater and there will never be anything greater than Jesus. Yet God gave Jesus to us as a gift. As a gift. As a gift. A gift is not something you work for. It is not something you are paid for. It is not salary. It is no remuneration. It is not a prize you win. You don't win a gift. You are given. It is all prerogative of the giver of the gift and he does in this case you are not given this gift as humans because of something we did good in this life we give gifts to people that have done wonderful things people that are good that man is a very good man let me give him a gift because he's a wonderful man but God's love that compels him to give as his very best is completely absolutely unconditional that why we were yet sinners. In fact, it is when we deserve to be judged and destroyed, then God gave us his very best. And that's why I think uh, for me, this is uh, the most important moments of celebration when we are talking about the death and the resurrection of Christ. Somebody lift up your head and say, Father, I thank you. For the gift of Jesus. Hallelujah. And in this service, I'll briefly share what I'm calling, what I'm calling um, the power of the blood. The power of the blood. There is so much we can preach. Actually, gospel is everything and all about the death and the resurrection of Christ. That is gospel. Whether you are preaching it on 25th December, whether you are preaching it on 1st of June, gospel is all about God that loved the people or the world so much that he gave his very best son. So, today allow me to share that which I'm calling the power of the blood. The power of the blood. First Peter chapter 1, you'll need to follow this even in the second service and maybe in the uh, services in the course of the week so that you can receive more. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. We can go to verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Somebody say precious blood. Somebody say precious blood. I'm not hearing our voice. Say louder precious blood. Yes, he says that we are redeemed. Not with silver. Not with corruptible things. Things that can decay. Things that can lose value like gold, diamond. But with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world and was uh, manifest in these last times for you. So precious blood of Jesus. We are redeemed by that precious blood. Of course to redeem there, as, as we shall see, 
means to buy back. Then Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, if you don't mind, Hebrews chapter 9 from verse, Hebrews chapter 9, we can start from verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Amen. Underline there. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hallelujah. That's powerful. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge you a patch your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hallelujah. That's to say Jesus entered once with his blood. That is very important. So he was the offering and he was the offerer. Now we have given a picture. We are given a picture of the Levitical sacrifices. Remember when they came out of Egypt. When they came, um, um, let me say this. God raised a, a nation called Israel through Abraham. Then, and God, why God raised this nation called Israel was so that God can manifest himself to this nation of Israel and then through the revelation in Israel or through Israel, then God will make himself known to the world. Have we gotten that? Now, when we talk about Israel, all the way from the beginning, they were not the only nations. They were not the only nation. There were many other nations existing. But the world was so lost. And God wanted to reveal himself to the world. And he began a journey by raising a nation through Father Abraham and called through many procedures, through many sacrifices, he began to reveal himself to them. Now when they came out of Egypt, God gave very detailed instructions on the vertical uh, processes and sacrifices. There were so many sacrifices, but among the many sacrifices, for example, there were things they were doing on daily basis. There were things they were doing on weekly basis. There were things that they were doing on monthly basis. There were things they were doing many times, many sacrifices. But every year, there was a special sacrifice that must be offered. It was very meticulous. It was very detailed. It was very procedural. It was for the cleansing, for the remission, for the covering. Actually, for the covering of sin of the entire nation of Israel. And it was done in so much details that now the ordinary people will be gathered in the outer court. Remember, the tabernacle had three chambers. There was the outer court that is for commoners and everybody, including the foreigners that had identified with Israel. Then there was the inner court. The inner court only the priests, the ordained priests that would be able to come into the, into the inner court and do some other rituals and sacrifices. Then there was the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was not a common place. It was not a church for everybody. It was not a place for everybody, but only for the high priests. The high priest will enter there only once, not every Sunday, not every Sabbath, not every month, once in a year to do this annual sacrifice to cleanse the nation, 
so that the nation can be forgiven of their sins of that year. And in the Holy of Holies, there were other details that was regarded and revered as the very place of the habitation of God. There was the mercy seat that was covered with gold. There was the cherubims, cherubims like angels sculptured from gold also over, overlaying the mercy seat and the high priest will go there with details all the way from the outer court when he's coming all the way to get in carrying the blood of animals he had to be spotless high priest akiingia pale hakuwa anaruhusiwa atakuingia akiwa na kikohozi wako kama alikuwa na kikohozi amechafuka inaharibika pia hata hakuwa anaingia hapo akiwa na pressure za nature calls I hope you are getting it akiingia na hizo pressures so alikuwa anajitakasa paka anajitakasa intestines anajitakasa kuosha manguo na nini na details zote ndio akiingia pale aweze ku uh, to be accepted now in case something went wrong nobody else would enter there in the very presence of God because the box, the Ark of the Covenant was regarded as a container of God. That's how I put it those days. So the high priest had to have a chain and a bell put on his legs so that as he's moving there, they, they can make noise and the people outside, the priests on the outer court, they'll be that is in the inner court, they'll be knowing that their priests, high priests is still alive just in case there was no more sound of the bells because he was supposed to be moving about as he is uh, doing the rituals and seeking God aton looking for atonement of the sin of the nation of Israel if the bells were no more ringing they will know that this man has been struck dead and because we cannot go in to get his body then they will only pull the man from outside through the chain that is on his leg. That's how detailed it was. He had to carry the blood of animals. The blood of animals was the one that was going to atone for their sins. The sin of the high priest and the sin of the entire nation. Are we getting this? So, and that was symbolic. You know what we mean by symbolic? A symbol. It is not the real thing. It is actually pointing all this ritual was actually pointing to Jesus Christ who will come as the perfect high priest who will enter the holy of holies of God in heaven and be able to present his blood as the high priest and also as the, as the sacrifice as the offering and also as the offerer I hope you are getting that so this was still something that God was saying one day it shall come to be that my son will enter to the Holy of Holies and he will be able to stand and present his own blood for the atonement. This time not for Israel only, but for the entire humanity, including those that died before Christ and even those that will come after Christ. So this time it was not um, Israel-centric. It was not just for Jews that the son of God will come and die. This perfect high priest called Jesus Christ, he will die for the entire world. I think it's a place to give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty hand of praise. Let me show you something quickly. And, and uh, by the way, I will encourage you before the end of this week, study the book of Hebrews because the book of Hebrews explains all that. If you can study the book of Hebrews, you will understand the Levitical uh, priesthoods in details. Now the, the significance to a, a new covenant believer. Because Hebrews is all talking about, is actually measuring about the priesthood of Jesus. But let me show you something quickly here. With that little background. In John chapter 20, John chapter 20, look at verse 6. Let's start from verse 6. Then cometh Simon. Now remember this time 
Jesus has come, has been born, has done miracles, has gone to the cross. He has died, now we say on Friday. He has died. And this is now the third day. Then came Simon, Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre and see the linen lie. Keep moving. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. Uh -huh. For as yet they knew not the scripture. Peter and other disciples, they have finally come to the, to the, to the grave or sepulchre where Jesus was buried and then they are seeing the stone is open and then they are seeing where Jesus' body lay. He's no longer there. And then the Bible says that this particular time they did not knew, know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Keep moving. Then the disciples went away again into their own home. So when they found the tomb is open and Jesus is not there, Peter and other disciples, they just went back home. I think that is something that should not bypass us. But Mary, somebody say, but Mary. Ah, you can say, especially ladies, you need to say, you need to shout and celebrate Mary. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. She refused to go. Peter, ameona hakuna mtu dani. Kwa kaburi ya meenda, na pamoja na disciples wengine. Lakini Mary amebaki hapo, hapo inje ya kaburi, akilia. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked. This is the second time she's looking. And looked into the sepulchre. And see two angels in white sitting. The one at the head and the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. This, this is now the resurrected Christ. And knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I'll take him away. Keep moving. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabon, which is to say, Master. So when Jesus called out her name, her understanding, her eyes were opened, and she realized that this is not a gardener. This is Jesus indeed. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. So Mary must have come wanting to touch Jesus at this particular time, maybe in excitement. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Don't touch me. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and unto my God and your God. Look at that. Amen. So that's a very important part of understanding during this time because Jesus has resurrected and this time Jesus just rose from the dead Mary wants to touch her and Jesus no 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 don't touch me because now he's the high priest I hope you can understand this now he's a high priest he has just come from the altar carrying the blood and he's about to go to the holy of holies in the heavens, just like the high priest would carry his blood and go to the holy of holies. So Jesus has just resurrected. He must appear before the throne of God with the blood. This time not of animals, but his own blood. He must not be touched. Otherwise he will become defiled. I hope you are getting that. If he is touched by any humans, he will become defiled. 
And what is the consequences of that? That means he cannot proceed to present his blood. If he cannot proceed, that means he needs to die again. The process must be redone. Calvin, are you getting this? I want you to get it in a way you can teach someone. Kama Mary agemguza hivi, ni kama yule high priest wa wakati wa Musa, ambaye akienda, akienda kule kwa holy of holies, umguza hivi, amekua defiled. Kwa hivyo, atarudia tena, utakaso, kutoka mwanzo, anze tena kutakazo tena. Yesu angeguzwa na Mary, kumanisha ya kwamba hawezi ya proceed. Kwa hivyo, itabidi arudi tena msarabani, ya kufe tena, process irudiwe tena. I hope you are getting that. That's why Mary must not touch him. And then he went. Many people have never seen that. He went before the father. Then presented his own blood. After he presented his own blood. In the holy of holies. Then he came back. Then he came back. When Jesus rose from the dead. He went and then he came back. Have you gotten that? He went and then he came back. How do I know he came back? Now, verse 25, look at verse 25 of the same. Verse 25, this is very important background. This time he has come back and the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, this is now Judas. Except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. You know who is that disciple? Do you know the name of this guy? This brother. Is this brother who was not present in, he was not in the first service when Jesus was resurrected. He came in the second service. So when he came in the second service, they are telling, we have seen the master. He is risen. He said, oh, I cannot believe. Unless I see the print of the nails. Verse, the next verse. And after eight days again, his disciples were within. And Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and hold, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless but believing. So this time round, because he has already gone to the Holy of Holies and presented his blood, he has come back. He has finished the atoning. Now he has come back. It's like the high priest who went in in the times of Moses. He has finished the business of um, sacrificing. He has come out. He has finished. Now you can touch him. Now you can touch him. So Thomas, now you can touch me. Now you can touch me. How, how many people have gotten that? Right? That's very important. It has a lot of meaning. The blood of Jesus was everything about the redemption of mankind. It is everything. There is no salvation. There is nothing. There is no kingdom. There is no gospel. There is nothing of God that will be available without the blood. Why is the blood this important? We know in the times of Moses, they were told to handle the blood of animals with utmost care. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, they were told that the life of the animal is in the blood. That the life of the animal or the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. In fact, they were even instructed that they should not eat the animal with the blood. That's why the Jews don't strangle an animal and eat. They don't do that. So they have to kill by slaughtering, remove the head, and pour out blood. And, and, and some, of the, some, of the African, some of the African cultures also do the same. Especially like around here, Mount Kenya. We don't strangle animals. You don't do that. Jews were not permitted to do so. Why? By so doing, the blood of that animal is inside the flesh. If you eat it, you have also eaten the blood of that animal. They were not supposed to be so. Why? 
Why were they prohibited to do so? Because the nature of that animal will now become their nature. It will become part of them. So to say, this is my way of thinking. Let's say, kuna, kuna mnyama, kuna, unajua kama if you are, if you are farmer, you have goats. Kuna huyu, kuna huyu mbuzi anakuwa mtukutu. Nao nae? Wengine unaenda mzuri, lakini kuna huyu moja, anaruka, ata ukimishika na mnagani, anakuangalia hivya na kuchenga, anaruka, anaingia kwa neighbor, anauma vitungu vya wenyewe, anarudi, yani mtukutu. Iyo diyo nature yake, hiko ndani yake. Kwa hivyo kwa damu yake, hivyo ndivu warivyo. So wewe ukikula na hiyo damu unachukua nature ya huyo jamaa ya huyo mnyama so na utakuwa mtukutu So in other words of course we know the DNA and everything the composition of life is in the blood So they were not supposed to take it But in the new covenant we know Jesus came and and overturned that and said you will eat my flesh and drink my blood so that now you can take my nature. I hope you are getting what I'm talking about. The blood. Somebody say the power of the blood. So what do we see in the power of the blood of Jesus? Number one, let me go fast now. Number one, we see redemption. Somebody say redemption. I, I didn't hear your voice. Somebody say redemption. Or salvation. That is salvation. So for the sinner, the blood of Jesus has the power to save. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 and 8. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So it is in the blood. In the power of the blood we have what? We have redemption, which means the forgiveness of sin, the blood of Jesus. Are you saying an amen to that? So you can never get saved without the blood of Jesus. There is no salvation without the blood of Jesus. Verse 8. See verse 8 of the same? Ephesians 1 verse 8. Can we have verse 8? Wherein he has abound. He has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Then check Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. See the difference. The Levitical sacrifice of Moses was only to sanctify, to cover, to atone for the nation of Israel. I have said that. But the blood of Jesus is available for every kindred, for every tongue and people and nation. Hmm. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. So number one we see the power of redemption. There is no redemption without the blood of Jesus. That's how powerful it is. There, was, there is nothing else that can wash the sinner's sins so that it can be acceptable before God. There has to be the blood of Jesus speaking. And now it is still in the Holy of Holies. It is still speaking forgiveness. When he said forgive them. When he said forgive them. They know not what they are doing. That forgiveness. That forgiveness he was asking for. Is still. The voice is still in the blood. Because that blood is still in heaven. Even as we are speaking right now. In fact that is the blood that intercedes. When we say that Jesus lives to intercede. It is the blood of Jesus that intercedes. It is ever speaking. And it is ever speaking better than that one of Abel. The the blood of Abel after he was killed by Cain. It was speaking and it was saying revenge for me. Kill Cain. But the blood of Jesus is still speaking but differently. Are you saying an amen to that? 
So the power of the blood we see, number one, it has power to redeem. Power to save. Lift up your head and say, Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that saved me. Hallelujah. Number two, the blood of Jesus has the power to sanctify. Or let me put it this way. To keep on cleansing. The blood of Jesus has the power to keep on cleansing. That keeping on being cleansed. So that is a process. It's, it simply means it simply means sanctification. I have said that that blood is still alive in heaven. Wakati Yesu alipeleka hiyo damu kule binguni yake. Hiyo damu inakuwa inaongea bado. And it is still powerful to keep on cleansing. First John chapter 1 verse 7. First John chapter 1 verse 7 if you don't mind. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sins. Now that cleansing is different from is, a, is what we see as brethren. These are already born again guys because he's talking to brethren. He's not speaking to the world. So these are already born again. But the blood of Jesus is available to keep on cleansing them. In fact, he says, that, that, look at the next verse. Do you have the next verse? Verse 8. Mm. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. These are believers now. Right? So if we say we have no sin, even though we are born again, but in this world, that we must keep on being cleansed. So the blood of Jesus is so powerful because it keeps the believer continuously in the process of being cleansed. You can come to him for cleansing. Now this is very critical. Very critical. Hebrews chapter 13 look at verse 11 and from verse 11 For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burnt without the camp. Keep moving. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Still talking about the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. So this is critical because there are people who we are told when it came to the Holy Communion, there are people who normally don't eat. Holy, they don't take Holy Communion. Why? Because I, I, I like the way uh, Apostle Moses was putting it the other day in Chuka. Unambuya kwamba ujichunguze. Alafu sasa inaletu kwa hofu. Every moment of partaking the Holy Communion was a fearful and dreadful moment. Because it was not a time to see the goodness of the Lord. It was a time to see judgment. Kama ujajitakaza na unakuja hapa mbele. Wewe utaona vile mungu atakugonga. Kama unajua wewe si msabi ujatakasika. Tafadhali usikalibie hii madabahu kuchukua Holy Communion. And as a result, what has been happening, you know, that is judgment. Because where you see the blood of Jesus, you should see welcome. The blood of Jesus did not come to say, come as you qualify. In fact, the blood of Jesus came because we could not qualify ourselves. I hope somebody is seeing something here. So people are kept away. There are people who don't take Holy Communion today because something is telling them you are not clean, you are not all right. Kwanza enda utubu ile madhambi yote hata ukikuja kanisa kuna msichana uliona barabarani alikuwa amevaa namna hii ukaanza kumtamani kuna mtu ameukasirisha kule kwa taxi umemuongelesha vibaya kwa hivyo sasa uko defiled you cannot take the holy communion so so they are being kept away from the resources of God that can help them yet at the holy communion that the place you can receive sanctification 
as a child of God. Did you get that? That's a place of cleansing. That's a place of cleansing. In fact, even if you are conscious of something that you have done wrong, you can prepare the Holy Communion and say, Lord, I come to you this time, not by my works. I put my faith in the blood of Jesus that was shed over 2,000 years ago. And symbolically now, as I partake this Holy Communion, I receive a sanctification. And you don't even have to feel a sinner or to know you a sinner. Sometimes it is not even about the sin that you know. Because you may be thinking you're okay because sins are not just what you know. Sometimes, even by failing to obey God, like I was supposed to obey God in this matter, that may be regarded before God like a sin. I was not supposed to do something. Then I did it. Whether it is a big thing or a small thing. Can you just imagine? This man called Saul, he was told by God, go kill everything. The animals and humans. And he was killing and he was killing. Then he saw, ah, these are beautiful women. These are fat rams. These are big animals. I think we can spare them for God. He did not commit any other sin. He did not commit adultery. He only spared some of the things. And before God it was sin. So we need to come before him for sanctification. It is not something like you have to wait until you know you are fallen in sin. We need to come with a, an attitude of that one of um, Psalmist, David himself. You know, Psalm, Psalm 139, Psalm 139. Please check carefully. Hallelujah. In fact, when you come before the Lord, you have to come to him, number one, as a priest. Okay, let me put it this way before we read that scripture. Melody, are you ready to hear this? When you are coming before the Lord, you come as a priest. When you are living, living, eh? I put it in quotes. When you are living the presence of the Lord, you must live as a king. Because he has made us priests and kings. So, a priest comes to pour out. To break before him. For a broken, a broken and a contrite spirit. Then I shall not despise that heart. You come before him with brokenness. You come before the Lord with a, a contrite spirit. You don't come to parade your religiosity. You don't come to tell him how righteous you are. In fact, you come and fall down before him, even in our time. So that's why I'm saying there's a time like we can come before the Lord as David was doing. Now, Psalm 139, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Wait. You are telling God to search you. You are telling God to search you. Now, you search. What do you search? You search things that are not obviously available or visible. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me. You are even telling God to try you. And know my thoughts. He's, he, he's not talking about actions in this case. He's talking about thoughts. See the level of sanctification the psalmist is looking for. Hmm. Right? And see, then verse, hey, where are we? Right? Um, now, can, can, can we start verse 1? Can we start verse, verse, verse 1, if you don't mind? Psalm 139 from verse 1. The Lord is my... Sh is it there? No, 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 no. Ah, 139, please. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my sitting down and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Right? So, God, you know me. When I read this scripture, God helped me to see something. There is nothing in you now or was in you then that God did not know. Right now, we are on that. This is 31st March, 2024. Do you know God knows the thoughts you are going to, thought, not the action, thought 
you are going to have tomorrow. You don't know what kind of thoughts you are going to have tomorrow. In fact, God can see our thoughts from afar off. We are in 2024. God can see your thought. 2030, the month of March, that year. He can see your thought. Na kuoneaga, mnasema kuonea 18. Sasa mungu na tuonea katika 2030. Wewe unasema unaonea mtu 18. Wewe kuonea 18. Mungu na kuonea 2030. Not what you are going to do. Not what you have written in the book. What you are going to think. Thoughts. 2030, the month of March on that year. So and so Patrick at 8.30 a.m. This is the thought you are going to be having. So Anatuanea, you know my thoughts from afar off. And sometimes these thoughts are not even clean thoughts. You are not even aware. You are not intending. You are not, you don't know about it. You are not conscious. It's so deep. So the psalmist here is dealing with that. When, when we come to cleansing, because sometimes we are only thinking is what I have done in the morning, what I did yesterday. Look at the level of sanctification here. Thou knowest my thoughts. You know my sitting down and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Then he begins to take it further. That is now where we go down now to verse 23. Then he says, search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts. Then verse 24. Hey, come here, verse 24. Kwangu me nyanganya 24. Aya, watcha tusome yo, weka 24. Right? Verse 24 is very, very important and very, very critical. Verse 24 is no joke. Lift up your hand, say, Father, I pray that you may sanctify me. Say, Lord, Father, I pray that you may sanctify me with the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hmm. Look at verse 24. Then he says what? And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And see if. Because kwangu ni miangalia ni kaona hakuna. If. The word if. The psalmist anasema. Mimi ni mejiangalia. Kabla sija kuja kusimama hapa mbere ya mungu kumambia anitafute. Paka mawazo yangu. Mimi ni mejiangalia matendo yangu. Nikaona nikajipatia tik. Nikajiangalia kusema kwangu. Nikajipatia tik. Nikajiangalia how I'm dealing with my wife. Nikajipatia tik. Nikajiangalia how I'm dealing with um, people where I work. Nikajipatia tik. Niko sawa. Kanisani sija zengenya mtu. Niko sawa. Lakini mungu. Wewe unanijua zaidi. You are getting it. Eh? Yeah. So he, this is a level of sanctification. Deep so deep. Should you find any wicked way in me? Please don't leave me there in my thoughts of wickedness. Lead me to your ways everlasting. What a level of sanctification is this? Hey, this is not a prayer where brethren come to tell the Lord, Lord, you know I've been serving you with my time. You will see. You see, I have been obeying you. You have been telling, you are telling God how you have been obedient to him. But maybe you can see deep in your thought there is a very, very serious, dangerous rebellion. So when we come before him at the blood of Jesus, we are able to be sanctified even those deep things that we don't know about. Those deep things we, we are not even conscious about. We are not even prepared for but they are so deep in us. As much as we are born again, remember what Paul was saying. Romans chapter 7. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I want not to do, I do them. This thing, if there is an evil thought inside of me, Lord cleanse me. So you can use, you can come to the blood of Jesus for continuous cleansing. Continuous cleansing. We call it sanctification. That is what the Bible is saying. After you are born again, you can now come before the Lord for continuous cleansing. You can approach the table of the Lord even at home. Father Lord, as I go out, I know the world can easily contaminate as I go to interact. 
as I go my ways. Sometimes I know that the flesh may jump up and begin to direct me in some way. Sanctify me and cleanse me. So you partake the blood. Are you saying an amen to that? For cleansing. We are, I read about uh, the man of God. They called him, they called him the um, apostle of faith. This was Smith Bigosworth. Smith, Smith Bigosworth was no joke. He's a man, if you want to know the caliber of a man he was. One time they brought a dead person to him. They brought a dead person. And instead of just praying for him, the man punched the dead person. A dead person. That kind of faith. Mara ya tatu jamaa kafufuka. That's a kind of a man. That's a kind of man. This kind of man. But there came a time they say that he was taking Holy Communion daily on his table. Just taking Holy Communion. For communion. Taking Holy Communion daily. There is something about the Holy Communion. When you come to the blood of Jesus for daily sanctification. Daily sanctification. It is true you may not have slept with any man. But maybe there is so much filth in you. That's why we need daily sanctification. It's true you may have not stolen from anybody. But it's only because you did not have an opportunity. If you had one, you'd have become a terrible thief. Maybe. Maybe the thought is still there. I've been telling you about uh, we should never be surprised. In fact, don't usisumbuke sana watch animalize na hii. Usisumbuke sana ukiona politicians wako corrupt. Usisumbuke. You should never be surprised. Ati ujamali simama hapa, aka true promise, aka sema pesa yetu, ye hata kuwa naiba hata kidogo, aka sema ataweka system, hata kula pesa yetu hata kidogo. Now when he becomes the man and he steals the money, you should not be surprised. Especially if he's not born again, you should not be surprised. Because the reason why he was a good man, and that's why I always see it um, a misnomer when we say that uh, you know, elect somebody that is not corrupt. How do I know you are not corrupt? I don't know. <laughs> we will never know who is not corrupt until the person is in, a, in, a, in an environment that he can now manifest his corruption. You are getting it? Yeah. So like, oh, now elect somebody that is not corrupt. No, 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 no. That's, that is not part of the equation. We always get it wrong. Because we don't know what corruption is in them until they are in that environment. So hizo vitu zinakuwa ndani ya watu. Na kama hawajatakasika, sahili atapata environment mzuri ya kuripua huo uovu basi inaripuka. But for a child of God, you, we can receive a cleansing. A cleansing. A cleansing by the blood of Jesus. And you can approach him in prayer and in the Holy Communion. That's why Holy Communion is important. Are you saying an amen to that? I will encourage us to be partaking Holy Communion, both in church and anywhere else. Ukienda kanisani, ambayo inahubiri injiri ya Holy Communion vizuri. Sisemi kule inafanywa kama mitaratara, kama registration ya wewe ni member wa church. Pale ambako inafanywa kimandiko, inafanywa kama ministration. Usikose kuhusika katika kumega mwiri wa kristo. In fact, he on your wakati wa urejesho. That is a time for forgiveness. That is a time for cleansing. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot avoid the blood of Jesus and think that you can be better anywhere else. If you don't get it at the blood of Jesus, it is not available anywhere else. If my sanctification is not available at the blood of Jesus, I cannot get it anywhere else. Not even in my determinations. There is a power in the blood of Jesus. Please lift up your hands. Commit yourself to the Lord. 
I would suggest that we can even stand. Hallelujah. Karaba shataraba hasokra. Brasa tataraba hayaka. Now, so when we are celebrating the death and the resurrection, now you know what the blood of Jesus means to you. In fact, it means the life of God. Maybe you'll mention that in the second service. It means the life of God. Right? So when we talk about celebrating the death and the resurrection of Jesus, it's not another holiday. You know that we say, oh, it's another holiday. Oh, now we can go swimming. Now we can go family gathering. No, no. For you, it means a lot. For me, it means a lot. Please, let's lift up our hands and commit ourselves to the power of the blood of Jesus. If you are not born again, you are following this message online or maybe on radio. Salvation is available right now at the blood of Jesus. Salvation is available right now. Somebody commit yourself to the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord and to the blood of the Lamb. And to the blood of the Lamb. To the blood of the Lamb. To the blood of the Lamb. Commit yourself to the blood of the Lamb. Commit yourself to the blood of the Lamb. Commit yourself to the blood of the Lamb. Rakata basakata rahasakata. Bashata raba se kalalaba ando bazoka. Beze kata raba she kalalabaza. Rikata laba she kalabra sovra ando bagaya. Beze kete te ble sovra santo lobradia. Basha kalabalaba si kalalabaya. Basse kete le ble sovra sandala. Somebody plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Number one for sanctification. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A moment like today is a moment to go to another level. A higher level degree of sanctification. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Karahasha kalabahantalabosa. Brezeketelebrezovra salalabaya. Commit yourself, commit ourselves, commit ourselves to the Lord by the blood of Jesus. We can never be better without the blood of Jesus. We can never be right without the blood of Jesus. We can never be accepted before him without the blood of Jesus. It is all by the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lift up your hands and your heart to him. Receive the power of the blood of Jesus. The cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. The cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Appear before him today by the blood of the Lamb. Anytime we stand before him by the blood of the Lamb, we are accepted because it is no longer my our merit, but the merit of the blood of Jesus. Oh, Rada de Balosa. Karatala Bahando Balosa Vaya. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. We can even pray the prayer of the psalmist David. Lord, search me. Search me through and through. And see if there be any wicked way. You that knows my thoughts from afar off. You that knows my thoughts before I think them. You that knows what I do not know. Father, I pray that you may search my heart. Karakaya katarabakosa. Karataza katalaba. If there be any wicked way, Lord, don't leave me there. Lead me to your ways everlasting. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sandebosa. Hilego siketebria. Kandelebo sikalaba. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You see, one of the greatest weapons the enemy uses against the people of God is something called accusation. Accusation. He can bring that accusation. But when you appear before God by the blood of the Lamb, you will be cleansed. Do you know nobody has ever evoked the power of the blood? Oh Lord, have mercy. For example, when you say, Oh Lord, have mercy. When you say, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Do you know what? In that word mercy, you are evoking the blood. 
Because the mercy of God is actually in the blood. Mercy simply means God showing you a side of his goodness that exempts you from the evil you deserved. That's why anybody who says, Lord, have mercy on me, he has never been turned away. If you come before the Lord and say, Lord, please have mercy on me, you'll never be turned because what you have just evoked is the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that says mercy. It's the blood of Jesus that says mercy. It's the blood of Jesus that says mercy. Even in the times of Jesus, anybody who said, Lord, have mercy on me, Jesus always stood like Batmaias. Son of David, have mercy. At that time, Jesus has not even gone to the cross. Jesus had to stand. Anybody who asked for mercy. Because when you say mercy, it is the blood you are evoking. You are saying, I have no right by my own. I have no merit by my own. I have no good actions by my own. I have no qualification by my own as a human. Now I enter by the blood. And because that blood was shed for us, not for animals, you will always get it right when you come by the blood. Please, I want us to make a short prayer again, maybe have a minute, and plead for the mercy of God. You may not be knowing anything consciously that may be the accusation, and maybe that is what the enemy has been using against your life, this person must be judged. This person must be killed. This person must die before he reaches 50. This person must be poor. This person must go to hell. But the mercy of God shall exempt you. Please let's lift up our hands and plead for the mercy of God. Mercy of God for our own lives. Mercy of God for our families. Mercy of God upon our sons and daughters. Karakataba shakalaba. Somebody plead the mercy of God. Yes, evoke the blood for the mercy of God. Yes, we can come before him to receive mercy and grace. We receive mercy. We receive mercy. Father, we pray for your mercy upon our lives, upon our families, upon our children, upon our lives. Father, we plead the mercy by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus. Basakarabahanda bagada, rakatata bajakala bagada, rikatala bashikala labos, horiabasikala labosa. Somebody plead the mercy of God. This morning, receive mercy because of the abundance of the mercy of God. We are not consumed. Any time there is a mercy of God. There shall be exemption from evil. There shall be forgiveness. There shall be acceptance. Yes, we receive the mercy. Father, we plead for the mercy. Your mercy upon our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we begin to enter the second quarter of the year. Father, we pray for your mercy upon our lives. For your mercy upon our lives. For your mercy upon our families. For your mercy upon our sons and daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray for the mercy. Mercy of God. It is available by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' greatest mighty name. Somebody shout mercy of God. Say loud the mercy of God upon my life. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Amen. Praise God. You are not born again. You had backslidden. You are not sure about your salvation. You used to be on fire for Jesus, but no longer. Maybe you have indulged. You are online. You are in another country. Maybe as I'm speaking right now, you could be drunk. But you can hear my voice maybe on radio. Whether in this country or any other country. A day like today, you can receive the mercy of God. And receive salvation. Because the blood of Jesus has taken away our sins. You just need to take the provision that the Lord has made. You are not born again. You are backslidden. You are not sure. Or you simply want to rededicate yourself to the Lord. That is like the man who was touched once. He saw men as trees. And he needed to be touched again. 
you can receive a second touch that will revive you again in Jesus. I'll pray with you wherever you are, whether you're in this sanctuary, you're with us on radio online. You'll make this uh, prayer in earnest. Make this prayer from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, let's say with them, Lord Jesus, I receive you today. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I come to you, Lord, by the blood of Jesus. I think we can say loud, I come to you, Lord, by the blood of Jesus. I receive your mercy and salvation. I receive redemption of my soul. Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my master. I confess I am forgiven. I am restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please do take your seats. You have made that prayer. Those that are not born again, those that needed restoration, uh, please let me know on this number. 0706-127-910. Please let me know that you have made that special prayer on this number, 0706-127-910. Maybe you are with us online, you can let me know on Messenger. You can use any of our platforms there, maybe on Messenger, whether it is Bishop Patrick Karaoke, whether it is a Great Gospel Visioners, you can write there and say, you don't have to write many things. And then we shall do the rest to encourage you uh, to be able to, to be strong in the Lord. What a blessing. Please always evoke the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Always evoke. And you can use the blood of Jesus. You can declare the blood of Jesus anytime, anywhere. One time, I nakumbuka vizuri miaka hapo awali kuna mjama aliona vile anachukulia mambo ya holy communion seriously yes sijua alikuwa amesoma dini gani akasema kaanza kusema ya kwamba ah damu ya Yesu si ya ba barabara damu ya Yesu si ya manyumba na magari damu ya Yesu ni ya roho peke yake kuna watu wanaamini hivyo kwamba damu ya Yesu tu inahusika tu kuokoa watu katika dhambi kutoka kwa dhambi lakini damu ya Yesu ni kila kitu Damia Yesu ni kila kitu. You, you, you need to declare the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is a total package of what Christ did for us. Anything that is called provision of God is in the blood of Jesus. So you can speak the blood of Jesus over your body, over your children, over your house, over your children, over your car, over your land, over your business. Kesho ukiingia kwa job unaweza kusema I declare the blood of Jesus in this my business. I declare the blood of Jesus over this my car. I declare the blood of Jesus over my children. Unawasab holy communion. And you see victory. Are you saying an amen to that? Hallelujah. So we're going to serve the Lord with our substance, our tithes, our offerings and our various sacrifices. Please prepare your offerings honorably. Leo hii tuweza kumtumikia Mungu na zaka na sandaka zetu kwa heshima. Tumheshimu Mungu kwa matoleo yetu. Ona ya kwamba Mungu hakuweza kujiwekea ama kumzuia Kristo lakini alimtoa akiwa wadhamana vile alivyokuwa. So he did not keep he did not spare his only son he gave us. And by giving us Jesus, he gave us everything. So today we can express our love and our faith in him by our giving. So you are serving God with your tithe. You are serving God with your offering. You are serving God with your church plants, commitments. All this is permissible. Those that are with us online, wale tuko nao kwa radio, unaiza kutumia mpesa kwa matoleo yako. We have the till number that is a buy goods and services which is 83 78 98 83 78 98 that is a till number 83 78 98
For those who prefer the pay bill, we have the pay bill. For those who prefer the pay bill, pay bill there is triple two double one eight. Triple two double one eight. Pay bill triple two double one eight. The account is GGVHQ. The account is GGVHQ. You can do hash, then specify your giving. In case you want to use your bank card, you can do so. But I know Mkono, a steward will come and serve you. In case you want to use your bank card, then do we have stewards that are serving there? That will be okay. Package your tithe, package your church plant. Uh, just like I mentioned earlier, Leo hii tunapongea hapa kanisa ya mwala wako na ibada for the very first time leo. Tuweze kumshukuru Mungu. Amen. Leo hii ibada ya kwanza kule mwala uh, inafanyika leo. Now thank God you and I we umehusika kufanya hiyo kanisa kuwa hapo uh, na, na ibaraka sana. Pia tunalifiwa ya kwamba hapa Kerua kanisa Last Sunday they were able to do the first service. Today they are doing the second service. And by that, after they built, they had 20 people in attendance. What a blessing. Amen. That was last week. Today it shall be greater. As we are speaking also, we've been able to pay down payment, uh, down payment of um, Kyoteni Church. Remember they got a place and they required a deposit of 400,000. By yesterday, that was done. So that, um, I think you can still appreciate the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Those are good news. Amen. Let's be upstanding with our offerings. Especially, we start with the tithers. Let's start with the tithers. Those that are serving God with your time. Let's start with the tithers, please. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please lift up your sacrifice before the Father. Our God and our Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for speaking to us about the power of the blood. There is nothing that we can do and there is no way for us to stand before you without the blood. Even as we serve you, we have access before you by the blood of the Lamb. We serve you because we love you. And we love you because you first loved us. And you demonstrated your love by giving us your very best. I declare grace and blessings and breakthroughs. Father Lord, I evoke all the blessings of disobedience. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I call every tither here. Blessed in Jesus' name. It is well with you. Amen. Go ahead, serve the Lord. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. said you shall remember our offerings you shall send us help as we enter the month of April I pray that we enter to help the help of God in Jesus mighty name amen the month of April is our season of accessing the help of God amen, amen. amen. Praise God. the month of April is our month of accessing the help of God Somebody is going to shout even louder. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. And you know he has said that he will remember your offering and send you help. May the Lord remember your offering Amen. and send you help in the month of April. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus. And when you are helped by God, there is nobody that can stand against you. There is nothing that can stand against you. When you are helped by God, Amen. Praise God. Those that are serving God with your church plant, you will also package if you have not done so yet. You have an opportunity even to serve the Lord. Church plant. The business number, we have an account particularly for the church plant. The business number is 247247. The account 97 84 87. This is for church plant. We use different accounts so that uh, we can make it easy for the accounts people. So the business number there is 247247. Then the account is 97 84 87. So once done, whichever platform you have used, please come to the altar. Can you just imagine? There is somebody meeting somebody. Kuna watu flani, kuna congregation flani. Inakutana sasa abakama mwala for the first time. Kirua now the second this time round. Because of our giving. Kuna watu ambao wanaokoka. Kuna watu ambao wanapona. Kuna watu ambao wanasikia injiri because of our giving. What a blessing. Please come to the altar if you have package your church plants and we'll keep at it. We'll not tire. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your sacrifice. Father, we worship you with our church plant sacrifice. We are so delighted that you, you are using us to expand the kingdom. What a joy. What a privilege. We are delighted in this. It's our joy to serve you in this manner. In Jesus' mighty name. Blessings upon your sons and daughters. Amen. Go ahead. Oh, precious is the flow that Praise. Amen. Praise God. We are also given an opportunity um, to prepare for the Higher Life Conference. I know some of us, you may have heard, we had announced that we'll be receiving guests of uh, friends of Apostle John Gasheru uh, from UK. Um, their trip this time has been changed. So that is uh, the, those guests, they will not be coming in the month of April, but will be able to receive communication. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. So they will be coming later, but we'll get the dates from Apostle as they communicate. However, we are preparing for a very important meeting, our very important meeting that is a higher life conference with Apostle Richard Mayanja. It's going to be the very first week, the month of May. The month of May, the very first week. We are not tiring. We are giving our offerings. We are giving our tithe. We are giving for all these um, things. We are also having an opportunity you can say for the higher life I want to stand with him we want to give before he comes before the man of God comes and prepare and this is in preparation that meeting is normally a great one and it costs a lot in fact it goes all the way to the range of close to a million so we have, we have an opportunity you can pick an envelope this is particularly for higher life I will not tell you how much you will do. If you can do the entire million, praise God. If you can do 10,000, praise the Lord. If you can do 5,000, 1,000, whatever amount.